back at it again with another Build Biology. Today's guest, kind of near and dear to my heart. Some guys that I looked up to when I first got into this stuff, really known for Supra stuff and very, very, very clean work. Just gonna catch some double vision. You may know these guys. If you don't, you're about to know. Twins Turbo. What up, man? What's up, What's man? What's up, guys? How are you? Chilling about yourself. Good. Up high. What's up? What up? What's up? All right. So this is our cool little hot rod here. It's a cool hot rod. Introduce yourself real quick. I'm Mark uh, Kaz. I'm from Twins Turbo Motorsports. Um, Eric, his brother. No way. You guys are brothers? Every day. Oh, dang. Every day. Every day. Yep. Yep. That's what we're talking about right now. Seen I mean, it in Super Street. Seen it in Speed Hunters. This thing has made the rounds on the internet for sure. It sure has. So we got a 94 Super here, Turbo. And uh, it's owned by Enrique Munoz. This guy is an enthusiast. He's owned this car since 2001. He has gone to Japan to get a bunch of the wild body parts for it before they were able to get over here in America. He's the real deal. He spent a year acquiring the proper parts that we requested for the build. Enrique's a graphic artist by trade, so he's got extremely attention to detail, which is awesome for us because you give us direction on a build and then we could try to bring out your vision as opposed to just build my car and just do whatever you want. So we were literally following Enrique's vision on this thing. So we spent two years building this thing and uh, there's no sins on it. You could take panels off behind the panels. You're not going to find anything hidden. This thing is as good as we can make it. And we put a lot of effort into it. Well, let's check out some of the effort up close and personal. That's why we're here. We'll so, start with the outside, the exterior. <laughs> It's pretty simple. It maintains the classic looks of the Supra. Not a wide body, nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. Got aftermarket wide body fenders up front and a, a really uh, unique body kit from Japan that he was able to, to source before it's available here. And, but it's a Ferrari Corso Rosso Red. And um, this is a genuine Rydox. This is the real deal right Rydox so, kit. Which is a big deal to these people. It's important. Yeah. It's a genuine Rydox kit, so it's not a knockoff. It's one of the very few. And he went and to Tokyo Auto Salon and picked it up himself physically in person. So this dude, the owner of the car, he, cool story, he went to Japan, he met Mr. Orito himself, saw that wing at Tokyo Auto Salon, mm. slapped his credit card down the table, said, I'm taking that thing home. Dude laughed at him, but eventually sold it to him. And <laughs> that's the actual wing from the Tokyo Auto Salon. It's only, only one of them. I like to see this as well. Like, it's very clean. And I know you guys can pop this off. Yeah, those no are like, time. and you know, like little fasters like these, these are from, a, uh, from the aircraft industry that's mm -hmm. normally on a drone. Very lightweight, small minimum, no drag, high speed, and you know, we like that kind of stuff. And it's just very clean. It's almost, you can't even really recognize it when you're not looking for it, but... Much, and it's a quarter it's, turn fastener, it's really yeah, unique, it and it allows us to pop the nose off in a couple of seconds. Yeah. He makes it easy to load on it up, even getting up you guys' ramp right here. It's yeah. Just a matter yeah. of, boom. And I know it'll come off very nice. Yep. Nice wheels. Special order from Look Germany. Those, the, My the, goodness. The running lights up front here, man. These running lights blow people's minds too. These up front here. There's a, oh, I'm, I can hardly even see them. It's crazy, but that, like the Supra's got a, a, a factory light that's about twice, maybe three times as tall as that. Yeah. So it's, I have nobody the, ever changes them and put anything else in there. So we, we can, he got the these off. from Europe. They never brought them here into America. Oh. We had uh, uh, our body guys, Buddha Concept Design, who was just phenomenal guys to, to work with on this kind of stuff. French them in there and they look factory Man, and it looks amazing. it's just a really neat look. I didn't look. even notice that's like how much detail is. Our wiring guy uh, Greg Piles who does all the wiring on the car he's a Motec wiring guy mm. he was able to figure out how to make those things be running lights and blinkers depending on what you do with it. Oh really? So you know a lot of a little bit of electronic wizardry to trick that thing to work because oh sure but it's now it's really neat so it's built into one unit right now. I mean again little things like that I mean, we've had a hundred super people ask us to buy those things. Yeah. I mean, you can't buy yeah, and get them because they're just custom. That, that's, you, you know, custom. so this adds up to this guy's car is just, it's, it's very unique. I really like these skirts too. It's so nice. Oh, just neat it's and tidy. Just molded in. Yep. That's so nice. Looks so good. And the paint is 14, 15 years old. And it's, uh, and when we were evaluating the build, we, you know, we were discussing paint options and it, we were like, almost why? You know, it's a, it's a Ferrari Corsa Red. And laid uh, on nicely. It's yeah. It's nice. These wheels, though. Wheels. Jeez, I mean, I mean how, we couldn't where do we have to go wheels. to get these wheels, man? Yeah. In this offset, and this combo. How wide are they? In here in America. They're 11 and a half in the back. Mm-hmm. And 10s up front, I want to say. 10 and a half. 
10 and a half up front and 11 and a half in the rear. The offset is so weird that we basically, we had to call BBS, we had to give them what we want. We're responsible for all the measurements because if it's wrong, it's on us. Yeah. And we had to wait for a racing team in Europe to order us two or three sets of these and they would be willing to make one more set for us. So that's how we got that. Yeah, it, took, that it took what, eight months? It took months to get the wheels. It literally took months to get them. To show how flush, perfect it is. So. The fit is awesome too. And I, yeah. I, you know, that's another thing that's really important to these kind of cars is the fitment on the wheels. You gotta, gotta just right. measure a hundred times. The wing is so nice too, just coming up and even all of this carbon. You know what it is? It kind of it, it locks in the the '90s. It's a for period, me, period correct. Yeah. Of the 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 whole in, the this was like the the pinnacle of the '90s Japanese cars, in my opinion. I At don't least think what's I've available ever seen here. a '90s Supra look so good. Oh, you know, you're too kind. You're too kind. But you like, know, and, and it's, like it's, back it's, in the day when I saw them, everybody else can relate. If you see all oh, the Fast and Furious stuff, that's, that's this what is yeah, yeah, relate to. Too. This is not. This is. Way, way, way. You know, clean. we're way too serious, dude, yeah. and we're way too. We take ourselves too serious. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, you know, I know this car is going to be seen. I know it's going to represent us. I know it's literally, this is the pinnacle of everything we've done doing Supers for 20 something years. And the diffuser is really slick. It's all in here. We're really proud of it, though. I hope you guys enjoy it, like it, appreciate it. We try to pay respect and homage to the Supra for what it is and not change it too much, but really just elevate it. And, uh, it's one and of those of cars that I've always wanted. Timeless. Lock it in, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, you can know that there's not too many people, even the Supra aficionados, know that there's 37 pounds worth of bolts on the bottom That's of this so car. Much. If you take off every nut and bolt on the bottom of this thing, it adds up to about 37 pounds. It's just insane. And you can actually and we have inflate them, those things. We have them all categorized, every single one, every bolt, nut, washer. We know exactly what goes where for the whole entire bottom of this car. And the interior is incredible. Jeez, man, the interior. The interior. Man. I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> this interior was done by Gabe's Custom Interiors. And Gabe's has done Chip Foose's cars for years. These guys are really the top of the, the top. Stitching. And my God, did they knock it out of the park on this thing. So they did leather wraps on the, the roll cage also even with matching stitching. Stitches. And um, let me catch that, look at that. So this basket weave on the Absolutely seat, insane. this normally is an embossment on leather, mm -hmm. and except for this is actually stitched. So this is strips of leather that's woven together. So that's a basket. real basket right it's there. It's a real basket. Wow. And you know, the entire dashboard and everything was removed. Every single stitch is perfect lining up. Every, there's not a stretch or wrinkle anywhere. It's the headliner was amazing. Done too. Even these these trim pieces, they don't belong on the door here. This isn't supposed oh, to be yeah. here, this chrome. And this little pull tab here, a la GT3 Porsches, yeah, not supposed to be that, here. That's actually what I was going to say, is that that's what it reminds me of, is GT3, GT3 yeah. Porsche. It's one of my favorite cars. And, you know, that's just a neat little detail that a car guy would recognize. Yeah, exactly. And that's the kind of stuff that would makes our day when somebody like yourself says, oh, yeah. I could dig that. Yeah, because no, it's, it's one of my favorite cars. So that instantly when I saw it pull up, that's kind of what I thought when I saw the interior. This, like, this, well, this is it. This, again, this, this little neat trim everywhere. You know, that doesn't belong there. Yeah. But it works. And the whole dash and everything. Check the so uh, Recaro logos in the seats. Yeah. That's okay. even a vintage Recaro logo from the 70s that we had uh, Enrique wow. source on the internet. He had to buy it from Europe from somebody to I use think it was that. Uh, Ireland uh, eBay. Yeah. He paid a lot of money for those stupid I mean, things. The stitching is just everywhere. I it's mean, just, it smells lovely. I mean, it's crazy. It smells brand new. Yeah. I can't even Even get in to the, the back, back seat. The jump yeah. seats, same thing. And then the stereo. I wouldn't recommend sitting back there, but not even oh, on a wow. stock super would you recommend sitting back there. It's not really. And even have the sit. basket back there, the basket weaved as well. And the headliner, even all of these panels here. Yeah. These panels are all plastic. Just took them all off. They're all leather wrapped now. Every single panel inside this car is done, to the point where Gabe's basically you can't, said, if you, you can't even tell via camera that this is all leather and just like. These guys did such an amazing yeah. job on it that you literally have to see it in person. Yeah. And normally you could ruin really an interior oh my faster God. than you could yeah. you know, undoing the interior. Make it nicer than That's, factory. Mm. It's really easy to ruin it. And I notice you have MoTeC. So yeah, it's got a M800 and a uh, Nixon expander. It's got traction control multiplexer. You want me to fire that dash up? And uh, Sure, yeah. It looks cool. Thicker. That's the new MoTeC C12. Again, we didn't want to cut a hole in the dashboard, so we made a rig that supported that 
that gauge pod in the factory air vent. Yeah, so, so that's an air vent behind there that just we, we, we just the repurposed it. Yeah. So we don't. There's no holes in the dashboard because these yeah, panels yeah. are increasingly difficult to get. Um, yeah. So we try and to always, covet these things, you know. I've always loved this interior of the Mark IV because it just feels like you're so driver oriented. It's driver centric. Yeah. It's just there's nothing for the passenger to do. You. Yeah. It's, everything's <laughs> facing you. It just you know, feel like you're a part of it. That's that's what I love about it. Yeah. It's it's very driver orientated, man. So then we had uh, even the dashboard is. Uh, all LEDs now, which oh, is wow. converted over from incandescent to LEDs and the HVAC system that looks so is done nice. also. You know, when you notice when you're sitting in these older cars, when you're looking at the dashboard, it just seems old and it doesn't, you Especially know, it when just, you, this is all carbon. doesn't have a look, you know? Yep, yep. Just for this, that's carbon fiber. And that's a real deal TRD tack right there, which are increasingly, I mean, that tachometer right now is valued about 1200 bucks by itself. It's beautiful. I just love because it. it's a, a, a super rare 25 year old piece that you yeah. can't get anymore. And yeah, I can't believe it's 25 years old already. It's ridiculous, man. Man, it's just incredible. Red belts, just to, uh, uh, again, a la GT3. Yeah, and they're, they're like a factory style rather than a harness. Yep, yep. That's Obviously, too easy to go with a harness. That's just. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Let's check out the the boot. Let's get it opened up and crack hatch. the boot open. Oh, that's better. Now you can see all the leather. See now in there. Too bad you guys can't smell it. Though. I know you can't the smell it. The you got smell smell vision. vision here. Oh, I mean, it's it's just. I mean, you it can is, imagine. It's really it's, nice. It's and like, it's like it's inside nice. of a really nice leather suitcase. Yeah, it's like your girl's about to hurt you with the the price of this, this it, store. This, that's exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Like, there's a brand new purse, and it's gonna cost thousands. <laughs> this is. This is worse than any Gucci perch <laughs> out there. This is, it's amazing. All right, well, that's cool. That's neat. Can we do that again? That's just cool. The battery. Quick disconnect here. It's on a cable, too, so there's a pull cable behind the seat. Oh, well, yeah. So park the car, you just disconnect the battery remotely, let it sit, because this is not a car you drive. Oh, and that's car. under the seat, then, to pull for there's it? There's a right next to the seat and behind it. So oh, if you reach cool. behind the seat, there's just a little just pull table, push switch. pull cable. That's it. Yeah. A little Morse cable, so it'll just, uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about climbing back here to shut it off. The subs underneath here, there's uh, amps hidden there. It's all, uh, it's all just tucked away. Again, just it's not trying to be in your face. Just really clean. And then we could still put the target in here. You can still maintain the target top, lock it into place. So if you wanted to remove the roof, which you probably don't after 25 years, but yeah, you know, not a lot of people do. Kept it all there. And even like these here, these are all converted over to LEDs also mm -hmm. on the, all the lights on the outside of the car, which just make a little bit of a difference. And uh, just when you park this thing next to a new car and it's got the old bulbs in it, it's yeah. noticeable that it's yeah. an older car. I agree with you. Let's check out the beast under the hood. Let's do that, man. This is normally where we would specialize. This is where we, our focus has always been, under the hood. Uh, yeah. Take that Holy in mackerel. Second. I'll just remain silent for a minute yeah, just here. just take Let that in. Let you soak that in. Just take it in for a second. And again, I mean, we, we went and hemmed and hawed over fittings. I mean, we're talking down to washers and, and hardware where, where these washers don't work, we need different washers, but, that type but, of stuff. Like, like right here. Like everything has got everything a stud on it. Has everything like, is studded. And these yeah. are stainless steel studded that studs that have been polished and then anodized as a, as a, we had to have ARP make half of these because they don't, they don't even make them. So we converted everything that we could to a stud and a nut. They're right. everywhere. You know, even like the, the intake manifold here is, and then the throttle body here, you know, these are, they have a, a relief in there so you could put them on. Everything. Everything. And then once we got ARP to make these things for us, we take them, we look at them, we say, oh, that's really nice. And we sent it out to be, uh, some of them out to be cadmium plated. Cadmium plated. Some of them out to just be made uh, black anno. And it's, you wow. know, and then again, like he's serious. Like we would go with Enrique and be like, Enrique, here is this with a, a gold washer underneath it. Here's this with a silver washer underneath it, it and a black, black washer, washer underneath yeah. it. What do you prefer? And we did that down the line with everything. With everything. So we micromanaged this thing Every little detail that I mean, people don't even think about. We've been doing this for so long that it's like there's so many things that you wanted to do. And Enrique just said, just do them. Just do them all. We ended up just doing them all. And so using his guidance to, to say, okay, that's what it's going to look like. But, mm. And then even these panels here have got all the, 
electronics and that's that's the when stuff you stand back and you look at where is everything yeah right so where's the where's okay so anybody's got a super knows there's a fuse box here yeah there's a wiring harness here Power steering over here, box here power steering there, and all that stuff ABS is stuff. But it's still all here. So this is all tucked in. So yep. And we just access okay. panels oh, so nice you can service. service it. And you can add brake fluid if you needed to, this, that, the other thing. And it's all paint taken care of underneath there. Yeah, there's no course. sins on there. And it's all squared away. And in there, there's fittings and mil spec harnesses and lines too. There's no, it's not like we just started using hose clamps in there or anything. Right. So. so you could see down here, if you can see, I don't know if it's a little dark. It but is a bit, yeah, but we had a you light. can kind of get in there. Yeah. So you got two mil spec disconnects in there for the wiring harness, one yeah. for the engine, one for the fuel system, and then the rest of it is plumbing. So that's just uh, plumbing lines that go through the brake system right there and the clutch master cylinder. So there's no like grommets with hoses run through it. Everything has got an AN line with a bulkhead on it or a bulkhead with an electronics on it. So no rubber, no gaping holes. No, for no rubber, reason. no chafing, no lines moving and doing what they want yeah. to do. We control yeah. everything. We tell exactly where you're going and nothing is moving. And we got to give props to our buddy Mark DeLong, rest in peace for the metal work on this thing here. Because Mark, he, uh, he took our vision and he did a, the metal work underneath here. And we lost Mark last year. So this well, is a shout out to you, Mark. Well, the legacy lives on. Yeah. Yeah, it's mean, a good one look too. At, look at look at the headlight covers, man. Look at the I mean, headlight. How tricky yeah. those things were to make on the backside, and those things are retained with one screw and right. some magnets. Right there and some so magnets. So that and look at okay, look at this panel right here, dude. It's like you can't even see the hardware on here. There's no hardware to see how it's retained. Yeah, or how it's attached. So you can't see that. It's tricky. And mega this, tricky. This thing here, that's not flat either. So if you yeah. notice, this is curved down. This is curved down also, and, and yeah, yeah. so it, there's, this is not a flat piece there. This shaped along the body line of mm -hmm. the firewall right there that's dictated by the Toyota. So there's four different angles on that top piece there to try to make it fit there perfectly. And it just looks like a factory piece. And what, what this, you know, I think what we were talking about with Enrique, if I remember it, is like we just wanted to like have the engine like highlighted like in a display case. Yeah. The 2JZ engine, GTE that we love, venerate, and there it is on display. Just cool extraction duct for the radiator. So this is a V-bound here. You want us to pop the nose off or? Uh, yeah, we might as well pop the nose off too. While we're here, we could kind of see the oh, engine. Yeah. Cool. Turns. Right Open up the engine a little bit for you. Yeah. So this is all neat too. This is all aluminum too, dude. All aluminum, this duct right. here. You know? I just gotta feel it to believe you. Feel it to believe it. <laughs> and it's, uh, I mean, it's very tricky. That and you can find some tricky. sins on it where it's not 100%, but that's the purpose when you make something by hand. You yep. know? It's going to be crafty. It is amazing. It's beautiful work. So these end tanks even, these are all hand hammered. So this is not, this is a formed aluminum end tank that my brother hand hammered over wood buck to get this shape on both really? sides there. So this is old school craftsmanship that you just don't find anymore. So this way we can get that really nice laminar flow that we want. What, what material is everything made of? This is, this is all aluminum. All yep. aluminum. Aluminum. And, aluminum. And the piping as well? Aluminum. aluminum. Yep. 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 And so like you'll see here that this is a, another, this is a bulkhead on the inlet here. Yeah. This is a male tube welded into the car there, sandwiched I both sides. I didn't even notice that. Let's so there's no dirt getting in through that inlet filter banging around that over there in a rubber hose. Crazy. There's a, there's, it's welded in there, it's painted, it's Frenched in, it makes it nice and the filter's on the bottom and it just is all one sealed unit. I've never seen that. Awesome. Check it out even like the, this is the mount for the intercooler mm -hmm. and the metal here has got to be relieved for this. If you put your finger over here, you'll see oh, that's yeah. underneath just, it. Just flush. So, I mean, that's pretty tricky. Even though it's that. hidden that under amazing. the intercooler, hidden yeah. under everything. It's like, you know, we just, it's got to be high level. I love you put the little logo in there. Yeah. That sounds terrible. All right. So this is all gorgeous. And I know since I've seen you guys pull in here, the bumper comes off super easy as well. You want to yep. pop that sucker Let's off? pop it off and take, take a look at all the Let's ducting. Let's do it. So Check these uh, quarter turn fasteners out, man. Yeah. So, I mean, we got these things from like a, a drone program. And they're self ejecting, really high slick misalignment quarter turn fasteners. It's like a modern Zeus fasteners that's retained. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get them from the aircraft industry. They're pretty expensive, but that's slick. Though. Yeah, it is. You know. That's how easy that came off. And uh, the wire, wiring for the nose. So, all the electronics on the nose is on a quick disconnect, which is pretty neat, and a curly cord. And the curly cord is cool. That's real carbon. It goes all the way to the front cross member, which is really neat. I mean, this piece right here is, I don't want to tell you what it costs, because it's outrageous. 
So then duct work. So yeah, we learned a long time ago that you need to manage the airflow going across the engine if you want these things to survive out here. So we, we think of this thing like an air molecule. I want every air molecule that goes in, I want to manage where it goes. I want to force it across the core. If I could help extract it out of the engine, I will do that. And so all the front section of the car has been managed for airflow. Obviously, these going to the, the radiator. These go directly to the intercooler core. Mm -hmm. These goes on the side. They, they just feed extra air into the intercooler on the side over here just to provide additional airflow. Yeah, see that? Yeah. Tucked into the side Just there. to pump air into that it. So we're, we're getting air into there. Once it gets into the box, it's forced to go across the core. And we, you know, we calculate these things based off of how much power this is supposed to make, how much airflow we need on the front of the core, so forth and so on. So, so that's a CNR dual pass radiator right there laid down and um which is you know it's a pretty badass piece of kit small yeah. fan on the back and it's got a swirl pot up top here so the cooling system the highest point of the cooling system is behind here so this is where we do the fill at and this is the radiator cap here basically yeah so it's fully contained so you know the the highest point of the system is here so we're able to get a maximum amount of air bubbles out of this thing yeah so it, it really it is you can't do anything else with a v-mount without doing this kind of thing here this kind of a system on it but the ducting. Right, the, the, blade, the radiator will bleed, the car, the engine itself bleeds, any little cooler that has water going through it, it all has a bleed, and all those bleeds go into there. So if any micro steam accumulates in the radiator core, and it goes off the top, it bleeds off in those things, and mm. it winds up accumulating it into there, that swirl pot there. So it gets it out of the engine. And some extra. Those will go and blast air on the brake ducts. Yep. So just had uh, extra space over there. There wasn't much room with the intercooler, and mm -hmm. I kind of... I've reached a point where we weren't sure what to do, so we had to kind of make something over there that, that worked. So. so now with this nose off, you guys can see how the, the air, we yeah. steal this air, goes right across the core, and then it's directed with this guy out through the top up through the hood. to promote it. And the so theory the, would be on that too, is that as the air is going across the core, it would create a little uh, low pressure up there and would draw the air out and extract it and put downforce on the nose. So multiple benefits. It's just very well, difficult to do. Not only do you got the, you know, you got the intercooler and then the radiator, so air goes across the intercooler, gets hot, slows Sold. down, then it's got to go across the radiator. So we take those things and we turn them into a V, dedicated air flows for each one, and it looks bitching. And it's really hard to do, so not a lot of people can do it. And you got to cut your car up to do this. So yeah. you better have a solid plan. Yeah, now without that in place, you can see where the core support is gone. It's a minimum of 25 hours a week minimum on this car for two years. Mostly 40, 30 to 40 I mean, hours. even in this front end alone. And now I just want to see underneath it. I want you to see seen, underneath it, man. We've seen all of this, and you've told me. You've told me. And I'm, 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 I'm we're serious, dude. I'm serious. I mean, we're both it's serious. It's just like this underneath, so. I mean, we're serious. It's, I want to see it. It's just like this underneath. We're going to put it on the lift, and we're going to check it out. Wow. <laughs> Let's finish off the ducting here, because now we can actually see everything. So I was just looking at this, this brake fan. Just a little, you know, directional blast onto the brakes. That's cool. So now you can really see it. So from this little vent here, it follows all the way down through here, right on the brakes. Yeah. Really cool. This is interesting too, dude. Like we had to get a way to get all this run of plumbing and wires from one side of the car to the other. Yeah. So we just made this dummy mock-up tube from the top. You look down, it looks like a piece of pipe. You can't really tell. What's it made of? Just, just a rolled piece of steel? Rolled steel? Yeah, it's like a 40 thou cold rolled, and I just that's bent cool. it up on a piece of chrome molly tubing, and, and boom, now it's a... Uh, from the bottom, you can see line. everything that's hidden in there, but yeah. up top, it looks just kind of like a neat bar. Just like yeah. a, You don't yeah. even notice it. It's just kind it's of this just hidden in plain sight. hide all this stuff and move it from one side of the car that's to the really other. Cool. Like, so we took off every single one of these bolts from the car everywhere and categorized each one of them. We measured it, we made sure we had the proper washers with it, and we went over and logged every single one in the whole bottom of the car, 37 pounds worth of it. Yeah. We sent it out and have it all matching cadmium plated. And uh, you know, when this thing originally was put together, I mean, it just looks like a gem here, but you know, the, the, the hardware is everywhere. It's all matching. I mean, down to the transmission, to the, to the engine here is all the same hardware up there. Everything because we had this thing down to a bare tub. Yeah, so that's the other thing. all these cross members out, everything out of the car. So it really just allowed us to break this thing down to every component that it's made out of and clean you know, it all. Clean and inspect and detail every single part. 
all and the arms are like deburred. All the aluminum here was, is all, all the flashing from the factory casting is so taken like, yeah, off. Yeah, that's an A-arm, so it's, uh, you know, it's a, yeah. a nice cast piece nope. of aluminum, yeah. but it's yeah. got flashing marks and casting marks on it, so we increased the surface tension of it by taking all that away and, you know, cleaning it up. Deburred it and <laughs> making it look nicer, and it's a more better performing piece right now, but it also looks nicer, too. Yeah, so big Brembo's. Big Brembo's. The endurance rotors, the nice HKS. What, what size are they? They're uh, 13 and a half, I think. That's a four inch exhaust, right? That's right, so it's, it's gonna take up some space. Huge. Yeah, it's, it's gonna take some space. Like. And then we, we stole this here with four inch oval um, for a cutout. So it's a straight shot of oval to an electric cutout, which I is pretty know. neat, because then you can hear this thing sing with no, uh, no exhaust on it, and it sounds really, you know. Yeah, the exhaust. Flip of the switch. Yep, flip a switch. Nice and throaty sound it. It's got a veal so side nice. titanium muffler on it, which is cool. And since it runs a flex fuel system, so it runs an E85 or gas back and forth, the whole fuel lines are all PTFE lined, mm -hmm. um, all crimp fittings there, Brown and Miller racing solutions, and then, you know, nice stainless hard line. You can't have anything raw aluminum or steel with ethanol. It'll just corrode and rust. Right, so right, right. it all has to be stainless or Teflon. Got two fuel pumps, the flex fuel sensor, what, and... Uh, what fuel pumps are in? So it's got two Bosch 044s. Two it's got two Weldon pre-pump filters and it's got a Weldon post-pump filter uh, up there also. And we wanted to protect all that stuff, so we built a neat little box around it. And, yeah, and uh, flex fuel sensors up in there also. And you know, the drive shaft, everything. Down to the Guibo. Yeah, you know. We're Covers kind of OCD involved. about these things, but... I haven't noticed. <laughs> the trans is all painted. Yeah, you know, it's lucky finding one of those of V160s, let alone yeah. it's in you know, perfect condition with 60,000 miles. I know, it's a factory transmission for this car. It's a V160, but man, <sighs> good luck finding them. Good luck. And, and then good luck finding one for less than six or seven thousand exactly. dollars. Exactly. Because I mean, that transmission nowadays, it costs as much as a nice used car. Yeah, and it's a factory diff? Factory diff, yep. Factory gearing in there. Just We actually just went through it. It's got a TRD differential in there, limited slip. TRD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What yeah. coilovers are on this? So it's got the HKS coilovers on it, and they're they're actually really nice. They work really nice for street cars and they're, they're good for a circuit car too. So yeah. it's actually a really nice suspension setup. And of course, when we had this thing apart, everything, every new bearing, new wheel bearing, new bushing, new everything new, 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 anything new. And we zeroed out everything yeah, on we it. we just zeroed the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. Quick bleeder is on here Yeah, that's well. the bleeder. So it's, just a, it's got a, the clutch is a Tilton uh, triple disc, mm -hmm. carbon carbon. So it has the slave cylinder is mounted on the shaft. So the input shaft's got the slave mounted there. So it, normally it's got a, clutch external shaft and a fulcrum here. So they move it directly onto the shaft. So, so it makes it? it really precise. Well, guys, you've done a superb job. Glad you could get reacquainted with it. Glad you could get acquaint the rest of us with it. Yeah, man, it's just kind of uh, nice to hang out with it for a little bit. So thanks for letting us put it up on the lift and hang out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you know? I wanted to see this on the lift as soon as I saw it pull in. Well, I'm so. glad you're not asking us to do burnouts with it. Cause or, or jump <laughs> something, you know. This is not, this really is not a, a jumpable it's car. It's not really a jumpable car. No. no. You know, do it once. But, that, yeah, would, but yeah. that would be about it. You know? That's it. Yeah. That's a lot of money down the drain. Yeah. A lot of hard work down the drain. Yeah. yeah I don't want to see that. I just want to sit back and appreciate it. Nice work. It's a good venue for vehicles like this, so I'm glad you guys are doing it. Yeah, if you see this at a car show, you never get to see underneath it. You never get to see everything that they've put into it or, or even know that they've replaced every bolt in the car. They've touched absolutely every part. That everything's been handmade. Everything like that. All the thought process that went into it with you guys and Enrique on just seeing how the light hits the car for the show and everything else. So this Incredible. does it. This is the venue where you can see this. That's amazing. I'm glad so, you guys came out. I'm glad we I came here. I'm glad we came here too. I'm ready to nerd man. out on this car with you guys. And I'm totally digging it, man. I'm glad you guys let us come through. Pleasure to finally meet you guys for once. Hey. <laughs>